Hello and welcome to scripting tutorial number something, I've lost count on what it is. But in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you what built-in functions are in Lua. So built-in Lua functions. Now you know what function is now. So it's just you can create your own functions by writing the word function, uh, giving it a name, putting parentheses on the end of it and giving it an end. So anything inside this function would work if the function was called. But what about built-in functions? Now let me show you um, what built-in functions are. If you go to help, then object browser, okay, and then find part in object browser. Now you can see all the blue cuboid things are properties, all the yellow lightning bolts are events, and all of these things up here, the purple cuboid with the little whizzy coming out of them, is uh, they are all functions. These are all built-in functions that um, Lua has made for you to use in your script. So, I mean, I can make any any one of these. Um, I can use any one of these functions I want just by putting a colon next to. Well, as you can see, we're in the part object here, part object. So after a part, I'd put the colon and then the name of any one of these functions, including the parentheses on the end. So I'm going to show you how to use them. Now I've already got the script set up inside this part, so I can just use script.parent. Okay, script.parent. Um, okay, so I've got the script.parent now. In fact, I'm going to put script.parent inside a part um, object variable. Uh, script.parent. So you know what object variables are, I covered that previously. Um, object variable is just something that stores an object, like a part, for instance. Yeah. So this variable here, which is an object variable, is now storing this part here because we just said part equals script or parent. Okay, that's good. We're now storing this part. Okay, so let's go ahead and use one of the functions. Uh, I'm just trying to see which is the best function that I could probably use. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stick this script inside. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me insert another part. Okay, and let's make it orange so you can see what it is. Uh, let's anchor it and let's stick it down here. I'm going to call this part something like, let's call it awesome part. Like I, I think everything's awesome. Okay, we've called it awesome parts. Now let's, all you've got to do is right click it, click cut, and now right click on light, lighting and click paste into. Okay, so now we've pasted this part into lighting. So all we've done, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's nothing to be worried about just because it's lighting. It's it's not tricky at all. Lighting is just um, it's something you can put um, anything into. You can put well, what have I done? You can go ahead and put bricks into lighting. You can put anything into lighting, and you can just you know during a game you can take things out of lighting when you need them like for instance maps if you go to a game which is a map, map changer you'd often notice that the map changes and you know it becomes a new map and these maps are stored inside the lighting all the script does is it takes the, the model of the map it copies it and just pastes it into the game and that's all it does and I'm going to show you how to do that now um, okay using a function, built-in function. So let's go ahead and do it. So the script is inside this part. So what I want to do is when I touch this part we're going to make it a bit tricky now. We're going to use an event and a built-in function at the same time. Wow. So when I click this part, I mean when I touch this part, I want my awesome part to clone into the game. So I want my awesome part to be inside the game basically. That's all I want to happen. I want the awesome part to be copied into this location here when I touch this part. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make our event uh, part.touched uh, connect function. You can do it the other way as well because I taught you two ways of doing it. I just prefer doing it in this way. Just get the get the part which is inside this object variable, uh, add the touched uh, event to it, connect it, make a function, and then whatever's inside this function will run as soon as the brick is touched. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so once we touch the part, what we want to do is we want to go game dot lighting. Now remember we used the game dot workspace. That was to act uh, to access this workspace here. So anything inside the workspace, which is visible to people. So anything inside the workspace would be visible to someone, or if it's a part or something like that. So we've gone to game dot lighting this time. So we're just going inside here. Nothing different. I mean, if we were to go to game dot players, we'd be able to get the players bit, and we'd be able to change all the player properties of like, different players in the game. But for now, we're going to use game dot lighting, and we're going to try and get this awesome part out of the lighting and into the workspace. So to do that, we can use the clone function, built-in function, to clone this awesome part and put it in the workspace. But we won't actually be, we're not going to be deleting this awesome part in the lighting. We can clone it as many times as we want, but this awesome part will always stay in the lighting. We're not changing the parent of the awesome part, we're simply copying it into another variable, and then we're going to, we'll put it in the workspace. So let's go ahead and do that. So game.lighting dot, actually I'm going to set it to a variable, I'm going to say um, awesome part equals, so we made another object variable, awesome part equals game.lighting dot awesome part and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put a colon and I'm going to play, um, type clone. This is the built-in function that we saw in the object browser. So if you go back to help, object browser, part, you can see clone here is a built-in function. Therefore, we can use it. And it even tells you what it does. It says returns a copy of this object and all its children. The copy parent is nil. So what it does is, this bit's really simple. It just returns a copy of the object. So it copies the object. And as you can see here, we've copied this object, awesome part, into this variable here. That's all we've done. And the second bit, the copy's parent is nil. Therefore, the parent of the part is nil. So the parent won't be workspace. The part is not in the workspace yet. We need to set the parent of this awesome part to the workspace. So I mean, if we were to go ahead and touch the book now, it all it would do is it'd make a copy of this awesome part and it would store it inside this variable. That's all it would do. It's not going to um, make the parent of it the workspace. It's not going to put the part inside the workspace. We've got to do that ourselves by doing this. Awesome part dot parent equals game whoops, equals game dot workspace. So what we've done, we've taken this object here, and what we've done is we said awesome part dot parent. So now we're changing the parent of this part to game.workspace. So all we're doing is we're taking the um, copy of this awesome part, which is in lighting, we've taken a copy of it, and we're going to put that copy inside the workspace so that I can see it. So let's go ahead and see what happens when I click play. Let's hope it won't take too long to load. I don't want this video, video, video to go over 15 minutes. It probably will, or it might not, I don't know. So, I'm going to touch the part, ready? Boom, look at that. Look at that. It has taken a copy of the awesome part. Uh, you can see, as you can see in lighting, the awesome part is still there, it hasn't moved. It's just taken a copy of it, and it's put that copy inside the workspace. And that's all it's done. And that's how to use built-in functions, very simple. Just stick a colon on the end of whatever you want to use the function on, and then the function name with the parentheses. I mean, look at this. Here are all the functions you can use on the part. Look, this, the destroy one is quite good as well. Um, I'm going to experiment with the destroy. So part dot touch connect. Okay, where we touch the part. Part colon destroy. Now remember, capital letters are important. You need capital letters. If it says you need a capital letter, put a capital letter. If you don't need the capital letter, don't put a capital letter. Scripts are very case sensitive, so make sure you get all the capital capitals right. Okay, so when we touch the part, part colon destroy. Destroy is a built-in function as we've seen in the object browser. Destroy, yep, here. Summary, removes object and all of its children from workspace. Disconnects object and all children from open connections, blah, 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 blah. So what it does is it, it removes the object from the workspace. That's what it does. It just destroys the part and you can't get it anymore. It's destroyed. So 
part colon destroy and let's go ahead and see what that does it's obvious it's just going to delete it I don't want to give too much of a spoiler but when I touch that green brick it's going to disappear whoa okay so that's how to use built-in functions you can use it you don't just have to use it with parts you can use it with uh, let's see humanoids but we'll cover humanoids in a later tutorial you don't I mean you probably heard of what a humanoid is but you can experiment with it you can see what it does um, you can use it with anything you can use it on play uh, built-in functions on players you can for instance let's see it should be a character actually no there isn't so I mean look load load number so this is the saving saving and loading uh, built-in functions for using data persistence I will cover data persistence persistence in another tutorial as well so at least you know how to use built-in functions on anything now you can use built-in functions on scripts on spawns on parts on anything so yeah you know now it's very simple um, you don't just have to put it in an event like I've done you can put it out of an event so as soon as the script runs it will just destroy the part straight away which is not very helpful so yeah simple very simple um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be covering in my next tutorial so we'll just have to see when my next tutorial comes but I mean I'm sure this tutorial was um, a lot of fun and you can just experiment with all sorts of things now and also remember to watch all I mean if you haven't watched my tutorials from from tutorial one you need to watch all of them to kind of get everything so if you've only just started watching this tutorial then go back and watch all of the tutorials in this series you won't be good at scripting unless you watch all of them like every single tutorial that I've done so far so I'm going to be doing so many tutorials after this I'm going to cover all the basics all the advanced stuff I'm going to cover GUIs um, how to make different types of games like mini games all sorts of stuff like that I'm going to just I'm going to cover everything like making guns making big vehicles ev everything so I mean obviously I can't do all of that in one day but it's all going to come slowly I'm going to slowly just make new tutorials every day so um, yeah I'll see you in the next tutorial then oh yeah also don't forget to comment if you get stuck um, so yeah comment subscribe do everything like the video and I'll make more so yeah if you get stuck just leave a comment and I will answer the comments okay so I'll see you in the next tutorial then bye